Why buy a Rubicon when you can get an awesome Wrangler for less money and build some awesome axles aftermarket? In this video, we show you how to do it. So the Jeep behind me is a 2015 Jeep Wrangler JK four-door. It's one of the most popular vehicles that we work on here at Mount Zion. So I had a good conversation with a client a couple weeks ago about a trip that he wants to take to go out west with his Jeep and his wife and uh, do some exploring in the southwest. So like Utah, Arizona, and uh, they wanted a Jeep that was capable, reliable, and strong. So he already brought us this Jeep, which has a long arm suspension already installed, 35 inch tall tires, some beefy steering, skid plates, a bunch of other good stuff. And he said, I really want lockers and strong axles. So we had a good conversation and incorporated a few other awesome upgrades into the project. Back here, we've got all of those parts all laid out. So let's go check it out. Check out all of this stuff. So what we're doing is we are replacing the front axle, which is the factory Dana 30, with this beefy axle housing from Terraflex. Now this thing is completely empty. There's nothing in it. No axles, shafts, no lockers, no gears. That's what all this stuff does. So what we're gonna do is replace the front axle, install that. We're gonna retain the factory Dana 44 axle, but we're gonna beef it up by installing big diameter 35 spline axle shafts, ARB locker, and big brakes the whole way around. So just to give you kind of a quick snapshot, we've got front 35 spline axle shafts from RCV Performance. These are the rear 35 spline axle shafts from RCV. We've got new drive shafts from Tom Woods. Here's our big brake kits from Dynatrack. Of course, we've got our 456 ring and pinion sets from Revolution Gear. One, one thing that's kind of unique about this specific installation is that you can't just use standard bearings out of the box. That front axle housing actually uses the same carrier bearings as the rear axle, which is completely different from a JK Rubicon. Of course, we need a good air source, so we're gonna be installing an ARB twin compressor under the hood. We're gonna also be using the metal cloak bracket to mount it. We've got some cool ARB parts for filling up tires. These are the ball joints from TerraFlex. Um, he also brought us some cool lights by KC LED and an S-Pod to control it all. <clears throat> One uh, little thing that I did when I ordered all this for him, he doesn't really even know this yet, as I customized his switch covers. So, Here's what they're gonna look like. Air compressor, front locker, rear locker, backup lights, fog lights, and passenger eject. <laughs> you never know when you're gonna need that feature. We're gonna show you what this whole project's like, and this is a great way to build the strongest, burliest axles while still retaining your five-on-five -five bolt pattern. So Herm's doing a great job working on the front axle of this thing. As you can see, we've got the whole front axle assembly installed into the Jeep, and he's working on the ARB installation right now. I wanted to point out a few differences of this axle compared to the old axle while we have it all apart. Of course, these knuckles are huge, especially when you compare them next to a stock one. This is really good because it prevents bending. Um, 
These axle tubes are massive and they are half inch wall. It's hard to see in there, but man, these things are really big. I also like that the shocks are outboarded a little bit wider. So right here, there tends to be uh, a tight tolerance when the Jeep is articulating. So by outboarding that shock, it makes for a lot more room inside there. Another thing that's pretty slick for installing a locker is this little plug here. This thing comes so that we don't have to drill the factory housing to fit the copper ARB airline. Over here is the actual locker where Herm's working on setting up the gears. And you can see right here, this is the copper airline that comes out of the ARB and that's gonna go through that hole to a flexible airline and right up to the compressor for compressed air. Now, Herm, how much compressed air does it take to engage the ARB locker? Isn't it between 80 and 100 pounds? Yes, sir. Somewhere right in that ballpark? 90 is an optimal pressure to run an ARB off of. So once we get 90 pounds of air from that switch in the solenoid, it'll send it to the locker and engage. Now, we do a couple tricks because installing the ring gear on the locker is a real tight fit. So we actually use this hot plate right here to heat up the ring gear to make it expand just a little bit. We also stick the locker in the freezer to shrink it down just a hair. It really helps to make sure that we can get all the bolts in nice and easy from the ring gear uh, into the locker. We're gonna show you once we get this all wrapped up the rear because that actually is the factory housing and we have to drill that housing to put the airline in it. It's coming really good and Herm is doing an awesome job. Follow along as we get it wrapped up. So we're making some progress. As you can see, we've got the axles all together, basically all done. The brakes are on, drive shafts are in. Uh, one little thing I wanted to show you, a snag that we ran into is right here. I think we're gonna have to notch this control arm just a little bit because when you put it down, it hits that ARB fitting. So, uh, I think if we notch it, uh, that'll work out really well. One thing I want to talk about here is these awesome Dynatrack brakes. These things are huge. Basically what they do is they give you a new caliper bracket and a bigger rotor and new brake pads. So uh, <clears throat> this is kind of the factory parts that you take off. You can see the caliper bracket is definitely significantly bigger as is the rotor. So, it should really help uh, with some better stopping power. Of course, there's no springs in here. The sway bar is not hooked up. We've got to run some airlines. Uh, so we still have some work ahead of us, but the RCV axles are in, the ARB locker is installed, and all the gears are set up. Out back here, kind of the same story. As you can see, the Revolution 35 spline axle shafts are in, and the rear big brake kit from Dynatrack is just the same as the front. It's a new caliper bracket. Uh, it's their own Dynatrack brake pads and a significantly bigger rotor. So we're making a lot of progress. We've got a few other things to wrap up, like the S-Pod, and that's what we're going to be doing next. So we just got 
had this awesome JK behind me all wrapped up. To recap, we installed a TerraFlex High Pinion 44 front housing. We kept the rear axle. We installed 456 gears, ARB air lockers, 35 spline shafts, and big brakes. This is an awesome resource for if you have a JK with maybe a stock 30 and a 44 axle configuration, this is the best way to do it to add some serious strength while having good alignment specs, an awesome front diff, some cool diff covers. It's a great solution. I want to show you under the hood at this ARB air compressor as well as S-Pod because these are new pieces for us as well. So right here is the new S-Pod source. Uh, this is the source light. I really like this one because there's no actual serviceable uh, fuses or relays in it self-healing so if you have something short to ground and then fix it it'll know that and restore the circuit check out this twin ARB compressor this thing is awesome and puts out some serious air to power the air lockers now right here are the solenoids right here and here as you can see there's two different air hoses that go both to each front axle and rear axle and then there's an air chuck right there for filling up tires after a good day on the trail I really like how this project turned out. I'm sure you do too. If you have any good ideas, comments, or suggestions, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. If you're on YouTube, make sure you hit that bell for a notification as well as subscribe. Don't forget Instagram and Facebook. We put out some awesome content of what happens in the shop on a day-to-day -day basis. There's some pretty funny stuff there, so you may want to check that as well. Lastly, visit mountzionoffroad.com and check out the, so the showcase section because there's a lot of cool projects that we've done and highlighted that may give you inspiration for a project of your own. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.